Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Hello, friends. My name is Troy, or Troidal Power, and I am a podcaster, a writer for geek to geek Media, and an occasional streamer. And I'd like to invite you to come back in time with me to January of 2004. The Mars rover Spirit has just landed on the Red Planet. Britney Spears has just gotten married and then 55 hours later had her marriage annulled. And Hey Ya by Outcast is at the top of the charts. And it's been there for months. On the morning of January 12th, 2004, an IGN message board user known as Grayson521 noticed that the recent release video game Metal Arms Glitch at the System was not at the top of the charts. In fact, it was nowhere near the top of the charts. It was selling very poorly, and Grayson521 was having none of it. They created a post in the Nintendo Lobby forum of IGN titled Metal Arms Uprising. They write, Metal Arms sales LTD in the U.S. according to NPD. GameCube, 4069. PS2, 2899. Xbox, 9113. There's a certain amount of shame I feel when a quality release from a new developer comes out and is ignored by the majority of gaming folks. This game was created by a great bunch of people who actually have drive and vision. Hell, they actually answer their own emails from fans. Think about buying Metal Arms next time you're tempted by some licensed crap. I'm as guilty as you. With the lulware in for the next month, there's really no excuse not to. Unless you just don't like excellent action games, of course. Metal Arms is the game most deserving of sales right now, IMHO. Hell, even surpassing P.O.P. and B and G and E. Ubi will do much better than a new dev like the boys and girls at Swing and Aim Studios. Do your best for a group of folks in the industry that is doing their best for you, Swing and Aim. I don't know why Grayson felt such responsibility to push Metal Arms glitch in the system. But I know that it worked. I saw that post on January 12, 2004, when I was just 14 years old, and I was captivated by the game. I poured research into whether the PlayStation 2, Xbox, or GameCube version was superior. I started posting in the Metal Arms Uprising thread regularly, and I even learned to make icons for the IGN message board system specifically to celebrate and promote the game. On January 19th, I finally picked it up and absolutely loved it. To Grayson521's dismay, there's a good chance you've never heard of Metal Arms glitch in the system. The game launched on November 18th, 2003, as the first outing from a developer called Swing and Ape Studios. It's a silly, cartoony, third-person shooter platformer following in the footsteps of a Jet Force Gemini or a Ratchet and Clank, which came out a year before. The player plays as a character named Glitch, who is a droid working with the droids of Droid Town to fight against an oppressive military force. The entire planet the game takes place on is populated by droids. It was a peaceful place until the military came in, and now it's being ruled over by a dictator. You are the protector of this last bastion of hu- Well, droidanity? This last bastion of hope. We'll go with hope. And you play as Glitch across 40-odd missions where you run and gun to your heart's content, along with vehicle-based missions, stealth missions, sniping missions. There's a pretty good mix of gameplay here. For the most part, though, you're shooting, and you're shooting a lot. There are nine different weapons that you get over the course of the game, and they can be upgraded. As you'd expect from the time, there's a merchant, because there's always a merchant. And while they may not be as charismatic as the merchant from Resident Evil 4, the two characters that you buy your weapon upgrades off of in Metal Arms Glitch in the System are just as much fun. Maybe a little more, since occasionally they'll flip you off if you don't buy anything. This was an era of video games where it felt like every game had to be kind of a comedy, but Metal Arms actually manages to pull this off pretty well. Not only do you get the chaos of the physics system at play, but there's also a pretty funny story here uh, supported by a really good voice cast. Uh, Dave Wittenberg is the uh, voice of Glitch, the main character, 
but he's actually not the character you hear from the most. Instead, the supporting cast gets a lot more vocal screen time. And that includes actors like Dan Castellaneta, Rob Paulson, Patrick Warburton, Darren Norris, and Corey Burton. It's a really good cast. You cannot play this game without recognizing at least a couple of voices. One of the things that works really well in Metal Arms Glitch in the system is the way that the enemies will interact with your attacks. The AI is not exceptionally clever, but there's a cool destruction system built into the game. You can destroy the environments a little bit here and there, but you can also damage the enemies. You can make their arm that has the guns stop working correctly, so that it just kind of flails around as you chase them down. You can shoot their legs off sometimes. Occasionally, you can actually take over an enemy and control one of the mill bots that you're battling against as you use them to destroy their own companions. What's especially fun is when you control a massive enemy and then it gets damaged. So then you're just running around as this hulking behemoth with a blaster flying all over the place shooting people. On the vehicle side of things, there's a couple missions where you drive a vehicle called the Rat, which is this big kind of off-road tanky thing. Almost think a warthog. But then there are also tanks that you can use, and there are loading equipment that you can use that are basically mining tools. There's a lot of mining imagery in the game, both in terms of what the free droids in Droid Town are doing, as well as what the oppressed droids under the military rule are doing. But it leads to you being able to use this loader, which has a claw on the front. And still one of the most satisfying things I've done with a vehicle in a video game is drive this loader up to an enemy, pick him up with the claw, and then just drop him off a ledge. It feels very, very good. This game's also got multiplayer. This is from an era where almost every game had to have multiplayer. And while I haven't been able to play it in almost two decades, my memory is that the multiplayer was a lot of fun. I think it was just arena deathmatch type shooting things, but you could throw some bots in there. <laughs> bots. <laughs> it worked pretty well. But really, it's the campaign and the story that I remember enjoying so much. And the community. The thing about Metal Arms Glitch in the System is that I like it a lot, but I like it for the things around the game. I like it for that Metal Arms Uprising thread on IGN just as much, if not more, than I like it for the actual game itself. Not only did that thread become a gathering place for fans of the game, it actually became a destination for the developers as well. They started interacting with the community via that thread and even held contests in there to give away Metal Arm swag. Now, I'm not going to go reveal my former username necessarily, but it's possible I won a contest. There was a lot of excitement for the idea that Metal Arms might get a sequel. But before anything could really get traction, Swing and Ape Studios started working on another project for another publisher. They started working on a little game called StarCraft Ghost. Yep, these were the guys who were going to make StarCraft Ghost. After they'd been working on the game for a while, it was announced that Swing and Ape Studios was being absorbed into Blizzard on May 16th of 2005. At that point, they were still going to be working on StarCraft Ghost within Blizzard, but we all know how that story ended up going. Back in 2015, there was a glimmer of hope. On Twitter, one of the team members from Swing and Ape Studios, uh, Steve Rank, actually talked about the possibility of maybe kickstarting a sequel, either a spiritual sequel or even with the original Metal Arms IP, but nothing ended up coming about. Still, people hope for more Metal Arms. There's actually a Facebook group called We Want Metal Arms 2. It's got over 2,000 followers, which isn't a huge amount in the grand scheme of things, but it shows that there's still a following. And they've also got a Twitter page. They're only at 600 followers so far, but I'm one of them. We do want Metal Arms 2. I would love to see a sequel to this game. So yeah, that's Metal Arms Glitch in the System. It's a game I really enjoyed, and it has amazing nostalgic memories for me 
because it was a very early example of me really getting involved with an online community. I still think the game's worth checking out, even if you don't have that particular attachment to it, but that really boosts it in my personal purview. It may kind of look like a generic third person shooter, but I think there's enough interesting level design, interesting writing and acting, and fun that this is worth going back and playing, especially if you liked the Ratchet and Clank games of the PlayStation 2 era and never managed to play this one. It's available on Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation 2. You can buy a digital download for your Xbox 360 for 10 bucks. Does not work on the Xbox One or Series X, unfortunately. Um, but there are other ways to get games, as we all know. Just avoid the PlayStation 2 version. Weirdly, the GameCube version is often seen as superior here. How often does that happen? So there it is. Metal arms glitch in the system. An often forgotten third-person shooter that I will forever love thanks to the Metal Arms Uprising. Thank you so much for having me on to share these memories. I actually started playing the game again because of uh, this opportunity, and it's still a lot of fun. Again, my name is Troy, or Troidal Power. You can find me on Twitter as at Troidal Power. Um, and uh, yeah, TroidalPower.com. You can find uh, all my stuff, including geek to geek Media, where I'm a features editor and writer and reviewer. Too Young for This Trek is a podcast some friends and I do where we talk about Star Trek, uh, the Power Playthroughs podcast, or to call it by its full title, Troidal Power Presents the Power Playthroughs podcast with Troidal Power is a audio-only Let's Play podcast. It's like Twitch for your ears. I do all kinds of stuff. Just just go look me up and, and I'll tell you about it. That's it for me. Thank you so much. Until next time, friends, happy gaming. Hey there, Screen Beans. Have you heard about Screen Snark? Rachel, this is an ad break. They aren't Screen Beans until they listen to the show. Fine. Potential Screen Beans. You like movies and TV shows, right? I mean, who doesn't? Screen Snark is a casual conversation about the movies and television shows that are shaping us as we live our everyday lives. That's right, Matt. We have a chat with at least one incredible guest every episode, hailing from all walks. We've interviewed chefs, writers, costumers, musicians, yoga teachers, comedians, burlesque dancers, folks in the film and TV industry, and more. We'd be delighted for you to join us every other Monday on the Certain POV Podcast Network. Or wherever you get your podcasts, fresh and tasty off the presses. What? what? That's... No, that's not... Can I call them Screen Beans now? Fine. Screen Beans! So tune in and we'll see you at the movies or on a couch somewhere. Because you're a whole Screen Beans now. You will be mine. Aurora. CPOV. CertainPOV.com.